What's up, dudes? Battle boarding at the Statue of Liberty. This is a story about a once in a lifetime opportunity paddle boarding around the Statue of Liberty. So the story begins in Austin, Texas at something called the ATX Sprint Squad, a group that gets together every Saturday in Austin and does sprints. One Saturday, I met a girl and we hit it off as good friends immediately. She turns out to be from New York City and she said if I ever wanted to visit, she'd be happy to show me around and we'd have a good time. So I had never been to so I was like, let's do it, and I booked a plane ticket. So as this trip was approaching, I get to thinking, you know what? I'm not really the city type of person. Woo! I do live here in downtown Austin, Texas, but one of the main reasons for that is because of all the amazing outdoor activities that surrounds Austin. So what am I gonna do in New York City besides all of the typical tourist attractions? That's not really my thing. What am I gonna do that's outdoorsy? Adventurous. Something that's uh, gonna get my adrenaline pumping. And something that I'll just remember forever. Then I was like, aha, I have an inflatable paddle board. How about I'll take my inflatable paddle board, the best by the way, Atoll paddle boards get you on. And I take this paddle board, I fly it on a plane, go to New York City, I take it to the Statue of Liberty, pump it up, paddle board around the Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty. Everybody sees the Statue of Liberty when they go to New York City, right? And they take a little ferry on a boat, they go on a little island, they do a little touristy thing. But who actually paddle boards around it? Who's out there in nature seeing it from a different perspective? And I just could not help but like smile ear to ear from this idea. It's so up my alley and I just couldn't wait to try it. So like any adventure, it starts with an idea and then you have to do your research to make sure it's possible. So it turns out that my best friend here in Austin, Texas is from New York. So I asked him. Hey Alex, hey, I was thinking about paddleboarding the Statue of Liberty. You think that's possible? No chance. It's literally dead bodies in there. I mean, there has to be dead bodies in there. It stinks. It's probably the dirtiest river in the world. No way. So after two so-so answers of you probably shouldn't do it, basically what they were saying, you know what, I was like, I'm just gonna get on YouTube, see if anybody's done it, see if there's any advice out there. Can't find anything on YouTube, so I get on Google. Can't really find anything on Google, nothing about it. So um, you know what, I'm just like, forget researching it. I'm just gonna take my paddle board there anyways. Once I get to the statue, I'll check it out. If I wanna do it, I'll do it. If I think it's too dangerous, I won't do it. Worst case that happens is, I don't do it. I just take my paddleboard back to Austin. Best case is I have a great time. So the day comes and the adventure begins. I get up at 3.30 a.m. to catch my flight, get to the airport, board the plane, and we're out. Here's a picture I snapped from the plane window as we're passing New York City about to land. I get to New York City and make my way to my friend's place. I finally make it to her place and the next few days we spent exploring New York City. The Empire State Building. Grand Central Station, Long Beach, Casey Neistat's 368. 368. That building from the day after tomorrow. Times Square, and of course, New York City Pizza. And then finally, the day comes, I'm finally about to paddleboard the Statue of Liberty. We do some stuff in the morning, which ends up dragging into the afternoon. We then fight New York City traffic to Liberty State Park, the closest landmass to the statue where I plan to put in. By this time, it's 4.30 p.m. Now I'm in a little bit of a rush to scout out the place, make sure it's safe, get my board pumped up, get it ready, get my GoPro ready, all the stuff I need to do. And by the time I do it, it's 5.15. So I picked this one place to put in my paddleboard. It was over this fence, but on the other side was 
pretty calm waters. Um, there was high grass and it looked kind of muddy, but I decided, you know, it's probably the best place to do it. So I threw my paddleboard over the fence. I hopped the fence, starting to make my way through some of the most thickest mud I've ever been in. It's like shin deep, right? And the grass is super high. And then I noticed there's a glass everywhere. So it's not the ideal scenario, but I know if I can get to the water, uh, I'll be just fine. I get to the water and guess what? I forgot one of the key GoPro accessories I need to get the good footage I wanna get. So I yell back to my friend and ask her to go to the car and get that accessory that I need. While she's going that way, I'm just hanging out and a cop comes out of this building, starts walking my way, stops at the fence, looking dead at me. He says, hey, you know you're not supposed to be here. It's like a huge fine to be here. This is a protected area, all this stuff. Why did you hop the fence? And to be honest, like there was nothing, that's, no sign there that said I couldn't hop the fence. There is a fence there for a reason, so I kind of understand where he's coming from. My fault. I told him this. Um, and luckily he didn't write me a ticket. He said, you know, you need to get back on the other side of the fence ASAP or help. So that's what I did. So now on the other side of the fence, I picked another spot, decided to put in here. Okay, I'm finally in the water, but guess what? The sun's going down, check it out. The wind is picking up and it's a farther paddle than what I expected. So I just decided, you know what? I'm gonna call the day. I don't wanna be rushed. I wanna be out there and I wanna enjoy it. I wanna get the photos, the videos that I wanna get. I don't wanna be rushed. So I'll just try again tomorrow. The next day arrives and this time I'm by myself. My friend's busy. I get there around 1 p.m. and decide to put in at a beach area that I spotted. The day is super beautiful. We got blue skies. The water is calm, the sun is out. It's just the perfect day for this. So I start out toward the statue. My strategy is pretty simple. I'm gonna to paddle to the island, then I'm gonna stay close to the island because I know these big boat ferries bringing people to and from the island aren't gonna be that close to the island where it's shallow, they're gonna stay farther away. So I know I'll be safer closer to the island. From there, I'll make my way to the front of the island where the statue faces. Once I'm there, I'll take some epic photos, get some great videos, I'll hang out a little bit, take it all in, and then once I'm ready, I'll just paddle back to where I started, super easy. And as you can expect from any great story, it was not that easy. So my strategy worked out perfectly. I got there within about 15 minutes, wasn't that long of a paddle. Make my way to the front of the statue where I meet this cool dude that foil boarded his way to the statue and was enjoying the view too. We got to talking, I took a picture of him. And then I started noticing these cops up here. They were paying super close attention to us, but not telling us to leave or anything. They weren't waving their arms or anything like that. So. I then spot a cop boat heading toward the statue, but it was so far off, it could have been going anywhere. My new friend noticed the same thing I was noticing, so he decides to get on his foil board and book it out of there. I decide to take my chances, surely that boat's not coming to get me. I start getting some good photos, as I'm getting these photos, the cops are still staring at me, and I'm paying super close attention to them because I know uh, if they start waving their arms and telling me to leave, I, I need to leave, but they're not doing this. But in the meantime, the cop boat keeps getting closer and closer and coming straight toward me. So finally, the cop boat is about 30 yards away from me. I know there's no escape in it. The cops are here, they're after me. And then about that time, I hear from a big PA system, a big speaker, and they hear this. Sir, make your way to the cop boat. Not try to run. Where am I gonna run in the first place? I'm on a paddleboard. Ah! I get on my board and I start heading that way. Meanwhile, everyone on the island is having a great time. They're so entertained that the cops are arresting me here in the water. They're loving it, laughing at me, having a great time. I get to the boat, climb on, and get my board onto the boat. The first thing the cops said was, Sir, do you know why we're picking you up? I said, no, sir, I have no idea. He said, you know you're supposed to be 300 yards away from the island at all times. I said, sorry, sir, I didn't know that. I didn't see any signs that said that. He said, there are no signs, but you're supposed to know anyways. He then said that the cops on the island were yelling at us, telling us to leave, we're not supposed to be there. But like I said, I was paying close attention to them and I didn't see them doing any of that. I would have heard them, I would have saw them, and we weren't leaving, so that's when they called them. 
He asked where I put in, so I told him. He said they were gonna have to take me back and they were also gonna have to write me a ticket. Here's me sad that I got a ticket. The ride back on the cop boat was actually super awesome. It was beautiful, it was peaceful. It was like my own private ferry ride around the Statue of Liberty. My ticket only turned out to be $155. And I'm thinking that this is Statue of Liberty. It's the most iconic landmark in the United States. This is gonna be upwards of $3,000, but it was only $155. I've had speeding tickets for more than that. I was like, super super surprised the cops dropped me off where i put in since i wasn't able to get the experience i wanted the first time i didn't get the photos the videos i didn't get to relax take it all in i wanted to go back and i was going to stay 300 yards away this time i got back pretty quickly and i got some really cool photos and videos like this what's up dudes paddle boarding at the statue of liberty actually got pulled over by the cops and boated back inland got a ticket for 125 dollars they told me I was too close to the island. But I'm back out here, I'm farther away from the island and having a good time. Pretty good view. That's New York, right there. See right here, we got the Freedom Tower. So I got my Atoll paddleboard right here. Got my GoPro going. Live vest in case I need it. And uh, yeah, New York City, having a good time. hanging out for a while taking in the amazing view I see that the Sun is starting to set so I decide to start heading back in it's about this time that the wind picks up to about 25 miles per hour the waves get really big and the current gets really strong if you've ever been on a paddleboard on a windy day you know that your body is basically a sail, like on a sailboat the wind catches you and it takes you every which way Pair that with the waves crashing against the board, getting me all wet. The temperature has dropped at this point. The sun's below the horizon. It's really cold outside. I'm drenched and I'm freezing. Now I have a fight ahead of me that I was not expecting. Paddling back from the statue was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. It was me versus mother nature. And it was the only workout that I've ever done where if I didn't complete it, there would actually be serious consequences. Either I have to call for help or worst case scenario, I could die out there. I went to a place mentally that I had never been before. I had no choice but to make it back. No matter how hard it was or how tired I got, I had to make it. Inch after exhausting inch, I made my way back, freezing and just wanting this to be over. To put things into perspective, it took me 15 minutes to paddle to the statue but it took me one and a half hours to paddle back. If I stopped paddling once, I went backwards. So this was a nonstop paddle for one and a half hours. By the time I made it back to Liberty State Park, I was so exhausted that I couldn't make it all the way back to the beach where I put in. I had to attempt to exit on these sharp rocks that bordered the island. There were 10 or so people on the island that were watching me paddle back with concern. Once I got close to them and got on the rocks, they helped me get my board up, helped me get back over. I was tired, I was exhausted. They offered me water, asked if I was okay, asked if I needed anything. These were just amazing people and I'm super glad they were there to comfort me after this long, exhausting battle I had just been in. I finally make it back to my car, deflate my board, put it back in its bag. The whole way back, I'm defrosting my frozen body, but I'm in this deep state of just fulfillment, peace and gratification for the experience I had just had. It was like I just won a championship or something. I was just appreciative of the whole journey. It wasn't easy, it was hard, but that's the way it had to be 
for me to be able to fully appreciate that experience. I wouldn't change anything and I'm just super grateful that Mother Nature humbled me and that I came out on the other side with an amazing story that I can share with you guys. And that's my story of paddling the Statue of Liberty. I hope you liked it, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and guess what? I'll see you next time. Have a great day, bye-bye. Yeah.